Thank you for making time to listen to another life-changing message provided by New Life Nagaland. Our core purpose is to make Jesus known through the power of the Word and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We hope this message will be a blessing to you and will transform your life to become an agent of change. Now, let's go to the message. Today, I want to talk about the marked of the blood of Jesus. We are marked by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are marked. If there is a mark of the beast, then there is a mark of God. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood of Jesus that marked us. That marked us. And I want to take all of us in the journey of the redemption this morning. What Jesus did on the cross and the, the, the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. The power of the blood of Jesus. What does the blood do in the Old Testament and what it does in the New Testament and what, is, what it does to us now? We want to look this together. The shedding of the blood was from the beginning, from the Garden of Eden. From the Garden of Eden. God created man and woman in his likeness, but because of their disobedience, they saw themselves that they were naked. First, the glory of God was you know, covering them. But after they have sinned, they saw themselves that they were naked and they were ashamed. And they tried to sew the fig leaf and cover themselves. But God had a better plan. God clothed them a garment made out of sheep. You know, the bloodshed happened even in the starting from the Garden of Eden. The bloodshed. That animal, innocent animal was killed to cover the shame of Adam and Eve. Jesus was crucified to cover our sins. To wash away our sins. Jesus was a blameless lamb of God. Blameless lamb. And right from there in the book of Genesis, we see that the blameless animal was killed and shed blood. And with that skin, it covered Adam and Eve. After they have sinned, now it came back to Cain and Abel. Now it so happened that Cain, he killed Abel. Because Abel, what he offered was a fat animal sacrifice to God. Cain, he, he was so full of jealous and killed Abel. And, and Abel's blood cried out to God. The Bible says that Abel's blood cried out to God. Because Abel's sacrifice, God accepted Abel's, Abel's sacrifice because it was the blood involved. The sacrifice of an animal, it involves the blood shedding. Blood was so important to God. It was so important. Every sacrifice says, God demands the sacrifice and the shedding of the blood. Blood has to offer to God. The blood was so important. Even in the Old Testament, we see. And God Oh, you know, like accepted the Abel's offering. And, you know, like it says in Genesis 4, chapter 4, it says, And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and out of, or, and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. And when we look down, it says, God smelled the sacrifices that Abel offered to him. It was a wonderful sweet aroma and accepted his offering. The blood was included. It was involved. The bloodshed was involved. And we see that this is the first true act of worship that God accepts. The Bible records. It was the first true act of worship. And it was blood. Amen. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which he was commanded as righteous, God commanding him by accepting his gifts. See, by faith, Abel offers an acceptable sacrifice, and the Bible calls him a believer. He has the record that 
pleased God. He has a record that pleased God. His faith and God's pleasure in him are connected with shedding of the blood in the sacrifice of the lamb. See, if the blood of Abel that cried out to God, how much more will the blood of Jesus to us today? If the blood of Abel cried out to God, it is such an amazing. Maybe the blood cried out for a revenge. But the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, it cried out to God for forgiveness, redemption, acceptance. Hallelujah. It is amazing. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 it says, The blood of Jesus speaks better words than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus speaks the better words than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah. After many years, many years later, Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 till 22, we will find you know, the, the flood. And after that flood was over, before the flood, God commanded, you know, like Noah to take seven, seven pairs of each birds and animals to take into the sheep ark for the sacrifice to sacrifice and Noah did as God commanded and after the flood was over in verse 20 then Noah built an ark altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal clean animal and, ev and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar the blood was involved God required the blood not just the blood of any random animals but clean animals but clean animals the Bible says that Jesus was the blameless lamb of God amen he was the lamb of God not just the lamb but blameless without any spot without any spot that's how God chose and when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever strike down every living creature as I have done. And we have seen that the rainbow is a sign of the covenant, that God will never do this again to mankind. All these promises were made after the sacrifice after the shedding of the blood of an innocent of clean animal after the shedding of the blood the sacrifice and both as with Abel so with Noah at a new beginning it was not without the blood it was not without the blood and after many years again sin prevailed it's all about forgive kurubo sacrifice corruption they forgive kurubo manu pap kurubo our sacrifice kurubo manu pap kurubo see after all, see, God was after man. The story is about God, He wants to dwell with us. God, He wants to have fellowship with us. He was looking for something. The sacrifice. In the Old Testament, it was the sacrifice of the blood that made a good connection with the people. With the people. It was the sacrifice of an animal, the shedding of the blood that draws people close to God. God was so pleased in those burnt offerings. God was so pleased in those burnt offerings because God always wanted to have fellowship with people. God is after you today. God is after you today. He is after you. Not to condemn you, not to judge you, except you. To have fellowship with you. To have fellowship with us. After many years later, now, God commanded Moses in the book of Exodus. God commanded Moses to build a tabernacle, a tent. See the heart of God. The reason for the tabernacle is that, the Bible says, is that I will dwell in the tent. I will dwell in the tent. How eager it was for God. See, he was willing to come down, willing to come down and dwell among us. God was willing to come down to dwell among us. The holy place and the holy of holies. 
and that is the place where God dwells. Ark of the Covenant, and that Ark of the Covenant was covered by the cherubim, by cherubim. And inside that Ark of the Covenant, there was three things: the tablet, the Aaron staff, golden pot of manna. That was where God dwells, the holy, holy of holies. And once to go into that very place, one priest that will go once in a year, but not without taking the blood. Hebrews 9, 7. But into the second only the high priest goes, and he but once a year, and not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. In order for God to forgive their sins, they had to take the blood. They had to shed the blood of an animal. The blood was involved. Amen? It was the blood. See, it was the blood of an animal which was sacrificed. And then they would take that blood before God. And the Lord would accept them. The Lord would accept them. This is what exactly Jesus did on the cross. It is the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross that cleanses us from all sin and made us acceptable before God. Now I want to take all of us back to the Genesis, the Exodus about the Passover. This tabernacle, it was after that Passover. But I want to take all of us back to the Passover feast. God sent the 10th plague in Egypt. And the last, the tenth plague was to kill the firstborn, firstborn of every house. And the Lord commanded Moses and his people, Israel, to follow certain instructions. In Exodus 12, in verse 13, here, it says, Now, the blood shall be a sign for you. The blood which they have applied on the doorpost and the lintel will be a sign, a sign that will be a sign for you on the houses where you are and I will see the blood and I will pass over you I will pass over you and the black shall not be on you to destroy you and I will strike the land of Egypt the blood shall be a sign for you Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus that sheds on the cross is a sign for us. Is our protection. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has marked us. The blood of Jesus has marked us. Even in the Old Testament, when the blood of, when the, blood of the Lamb has marked their house, the destruction will not come, will not touch that family, but it will pass over them. Passover. That was the feast. And even today, the Israelites, the Jews, they observe this. Lord, we thank you for what you have done to, for, to our ancestors. We want to thank you for passing over us the destructions when you, when you, when you strike the, the, the land of Egypt. Thank you for sparing us. Thank you. That was the Passover. That spirit of destruction passed by the door when you have the blood of Jesus applied over your life the destruction will pass over you they will not have power over you they cannot touch you they cannot touch you the blood of Jesus is a sign Woo! it is a sign hallelujah it is a sign it is a sign for us this day today tomorrow and forever the blood of Jesus is a sign that the destructions cannot destroy us. Hallelujah. At this Passover, now, at this Passover, when we come to the New Testament, when we look at the life of Jesus, when we see the sacrifice of Jesus, at this Passover, actually the Passover, it is about a week, seven days, seven days but the passover it is just a meal thanksgiving meal remembering what 
God has done for their ancestors. It is just a meal. But the whole seven week, it is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. And on that week, the Jewish, the Hebrews, in their houses, yeast. They will take out every yeast from their house. They, will, they have to search and take it out the dough or yeast. They have to take out all those yeast for seven days. Seven days. And on that day, and on that day, Jesus died for us. Taking our sins. The Bible calls yeast a sin. Bible the yeast to less sin give us signified today. Yeast in our life. Jesus took all those sins on the cross. On this, in, at this time of Passover, do you know what Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? During this Passover, Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the book of Luke, who was a physician, he describes further that even the sweat that comes from his body, from his face, was a blood. It was extreme for him to carry that burden for us. Remember, when Jesus was going through those times, people were doing making merry. They were celebrating Passover. They were rejoicing, but here the real Passover lamb was about to do something great for us. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, crying to God, Father, if it is your will, please take this cup away from me. The cup signifies the wretch, anger, wretch from God. Take this cup away from me. Now people were doing making merries at home. They were rejoicing. And now the real Passover lamb is here about to do something great. Even his sweat become blood. So when Jesus, he was on the cross and Jesus said, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. Every single drop was drained out from his body. Every single drop of his blood was drained out from his body. He said, I am thirsty. And at the time, in John 19.30, so when Jesus had received the sore wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Father, receive my spirit. He gave up his spirit. Hallelujah. He took all our sin and shame on the cross and he said, it is finished. Number one, the prophecies of scriptures has been fulfilled. It is finished. It is finished. Number two, the judgment of sin was complete. The judgment of sin was complete. Hey, every year, it Saguli luigina, ram luigina, itu luigina, aibo aibo. No, I think that is enough. I will send my son Jesus, and I will do that once and for all. Jesus did once and for all. He died on the cross once and for all. Jesus became our perfect sacrifice on the cross. The judgment of sin was complete. Three, the forgiveness of sin was made available through the shedding of his blood. Through the shedding of his blood. There is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of the blood. There is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of the blood. In order to forgive those Israelites, people has to kill an animal and offer the blood to God. And that is how their sins will be forgiven. Actually, it was covered. Their conscience is a little bit clear. But it was not wiped out. But Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, when He did that, He did it once and for all. Hallelujah. Once and for all. Hallelujah. Jesus' blood was sinless because he did not come from earthly father. Muslim says that Jesus had no earthly father. Even the Muslim, they say that Jesus had no earthly father. 
He was a miracle. He has only mother. This is from Quran. This is from Muslim other faiths. Saying that Jesus had no earthly father. He has only mother. And that son, Jesus, was a miracle from heaven. Miracle from Allah. The, what they say. It is amazing. Jesus is a miracle. His blood was not from the, the, the earthly father. His blood was pure directly from the father. From the Holy Spirit. And therefore his blood was pure and sinless. That is how it could wash away our sins. Hallelujah. He did this once and for all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Leviticus chapter 8 verse 22 till 24. This is amazing. Let us mark ourselves by the blood of Jesus this morning. Mark ourselves by the blood of Jesus this morning. Then he, Moses, Moses presented the other ram, the ram of ordination, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. Aaron was a priest, laid hands on the ram in verse 23, and he killed it, and Moses took some of its blood and put it on the loop of Aaron's ear, right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Even in the Old Testament, the blood was a covering, was a protection for them. How much more will the blood of Jesus protect us? How much more will the blood of Jesus protect us? Let us apply the blood of Jesus into our lives. Let us apply the blood of Jesus that the sickness that we're going through, the pain that we are going through, let us apply the blood of Jesus in our family. Let us apply the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the perfect protection. Is the perfect protection. In verse 24, similarly it says, Then he presented Aaron's son. Now, before it was Aaron. Now it was his son. It was his son. Amen. And Moses put some of the blood on the loop of the right ears. And on the thumb of the right hands. And on the big toe of the right feet. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus not only washes us internally. But also marks us externally. The blood of Jesus not only washes our sin internally, but it also marks us externally. Hallelujah. It marks us. And I like what, what Reinhard Bonnke, he says. When we are covered by the blood of Jesus, it is like us walking in the dark place, in the dark place with full of joy because we are full of the blood of Jesus. And now we are in the dark place and there, there's a devil, three devils. He said three devils. One senior, two juniors. <laughs> One senior, two juniors, devil. And the senior devil tells the junior devils, look, 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 look. You see the guy? You see the person? Look, he is marked with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> he is marked with the blood of Jesus. And the senior devil told the, you know, like tells the junior uh, devils, reminding them not to mess with that person. <laughs> Amen. When you see people marked with the blood of Jesus, do not touch them. <laughs> do not touch them. I say, do not touch them. If you do touch them, the legion angels will pounce upon us. <laughs> The legion angels will pounce upon. You know, no, no, I'm just saying what the devil says, but I'm not devil right now. <laughs> but the legion angels will come and pounce upon them. Hallelujah. I think that is exactly what it does in the, in the, in the spiritual realm. When we are marked by the blood of Jesus, the devil, even the devil, recognizes us. 
Even the devil recognizes us. They cannot touch the blood of Jesus. It was the perfect sacrifice. We have received it freely. But for Jesus, he paid the greatest price. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on. When we are covered by the blood of Jesus, oh, I'm telling you, God watches over it. God watches over it. God watches over every single blood that Jesus has shed for us. One single drop of Jesus, one single drop blood of Jesus is enough to cover us, is enough to forgive all of our sin and shame. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when we are marked by the blood of Jesus, God watches over us. It is like a GPS tracker. <laughs> it is like a GPS tracker. <laughs> that is installed in our body it does not only wash our sin internally but it also marks us externally just like Moses they killed the ram and take the blood of the ram and put it on the Aaron's earlobe number one number two pump let us apply the blood of Jesus over our life the blood of Jesus is our perfect protection. Protection against all curses. Protection against all witchcrafts. Protection against all the evil plans that come against us. It's a protection. We hear so many stories that I'm not saying it can do husan way they say witchcrafts are there, evil spirits are there. Even the devil, they are trying their best to destroy the people. But the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus identify us. The blood of Jesus, that is our mark. Amen. That is our mark. Wherever we go, we have the blood of Jesus. And the angel of the Lord watches over those who are marked by the blood of Jesus. We are all washed by the blood of Jesus. No weapon that form against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 till 19 it says. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 till 19 it says. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible seeds, corruptible things like silver or gold, like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are not redeemed with things like silver or gold. But we are redeemed by the incorruptible, the blood of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. If you are going through some tough times in your life, in your family, I want you to believe in the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to believe in the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. One drop of the blood of Jesus is enough to cleanse us, to wash us, and to protect us. One blood of Jesus is enough. It is enough. One blood of Jesus it's enough to cleanse us, to wash us, to heal us. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for listening to this message. If you have been blessed, please write to us, New Life Naglan Media at the rate gmail.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, New Life Naglan. Contact us at 6. 009 Thank you.